Hello. Today I wanted to talk about whether I believe women should ever be masculine. And what I mean by that is should women enter into or operate from more of a masculine, goal-driven, achievements-based, forward-pointing, assertive energy. And I guess the title is a little bit misleading because about 20 or so percent of women do naturally have this innate masculine core. That is their most true selves and what they feel most fulfilled by. It's their life's purpose, their life's mission to achieve and to go out and dominate the world. However, 80% of women, I would say, are more naturally feminine at their core. And what I mean by that is that they are just innately more nurturing, softer, free-flowing, not led by things like mission and purpose, but rather by love and relationships. But yet we don't really see the world today, I think, with women as sort of an 80-20 split. I think it's much more closer to an 80-20 split in the other way, where most women enact very masculine behaviours despite them being not in alignment with maybe their true core. And this sort of disconnect manifests in different ways, I believe. I think very often women who are more feminine at their core struggle to sort of fit in or feel like they belong in a very masculine dominated world. And I think that's because we don't really have the same sort of opportunity or community that we did in the past where feminine women could form these relationships and friendships without sort of having the economic demand of masculinity, if that makes sense. But I guess what really inspired me to make this video is that I did a quiz a few days ago. It was like a silly little character traits type quiz and it is just a rough sort of estimate on your character traits and whether you are more naturally feminine or masculine and I kind of knew what my results would be before I did it. But yeah, they weren't surprising at all. Here were my results. I was about 80% feminine and 0% masculine which did not surprise me because I know myself, I've done the kind of internal self-reflection to realize that I'm more naturally drawn to my love relationships and my friendships and I don't thrive in places that kind of demand a masculine energy. However, I'm currently in a period of my life where life kind of demands from me to enter into that kind of masculine headspace for my own sort of survival and for my own ability to thrive. For example, I've spent the last four months at uni, which is very task-based and very hard work driven. Um, very results oriented sort of thing. Maybe a more feminine approach to education would be, you know, flowing from one book to another, one form of knowledge to another, not feeling tied down or like you have to pursue any one single route and maybe without the competitiveness of sort of exams and that sort of thing. But of course that would be very difficult to implement in today's world that judges us based on our sort of competitiveness and our ability to outperform each other. It's very difficult to sort of exist outside of that. But yeah, I think that in the modern world there are only really two ways for women to sort of achieve the space and the safety of being able to express their femininity fully. And I think the first way is sort of being in a relationship with someone who is willing to provide and who creates a feeling of safety and who you can trust completely but it's not always an option and it's not always something that you can sort of sit around and wait for especially in the modern day and age just existing as a feminine woman is so exhausting because you know that this world is not built for you and that's I guess why I do what I do because I think the second way of really escaping the masculine dominated world is to create a life for yourself that is enough to be happy in. I don't kid myself that I'm going to be uploading every day for the rest of my life or that I'm going to be grinding as hard as I do now forever. I know that once I get to a certain point or once I become a wife or a mother, whichever one comes first, I will be making enough money online to sort of sustain the kind of life that I want, which would be in the near future to live in Thailand or somewhere with a lot of nature, with a lot of beauty. The way that I'm going to hopefully do that is through making money online and through YouTube and through documenting the process. But I would honestly say that there is a lot of business advice out there that is very useful to women who are feminine at their core but who have to kind of perform and operate in a masculine dominated world. I don't think I am ever going to be fulfilled by the numbers and by the achievement of YouTube in the same way that maybe another YouTuber who is very masculine would, but 
I still find fulfillment in the fact that I get to grow a community and that I get to help people and that I get to teach what I love to learn, that sort of thing. So I think it is possible to have a job or rather to do things that you love that produce money but that don't necessarily take away from your femininity. And if you're afraid of the kind of insecurity and risk of that kind of job, then I think there are still ways of cultivating your femininity while working in a more masculine dominated world. It's just that you have to put that little bit more effort in and be a little bit more conscious with your own energy and with your own innate nature when it comes to working in that kind of environment, if that makes sense. Now that I've sort of made my decision that I'm no longer going to be staying in university, I've been putting a lot more effort, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, into the YouTube and into uploading every day, which does demand a very sort of masculine headspace from it from me and one that I find quite unnatural, but it's not impossible for me to work hard. I think I'm very lucky that I had such a good male role model growing up in that my dad, for as long as I can remember, has gotten up at 4.30 every morning to go to work, to stay there for 13 or 14 hours and then come home, have an hour or two, maybe to himself, usually he spends it learning something like the guitar or reading or with his family and then go to bed at like 9pm and doing it all over again. So hard work is not alien to me. It's not like I was raised to be lazy and I'm very grateful for that. I don't even believe necessarily that being in your feminine energy is an example of laziness. I think you can absolutely be productive in a sense and still be feminine. It's just that when you enter into things like business and education, these are so results based and goal oriented that you kind of in order to perform well, you have to kind of play the game and compete in a sense with other people because as much as I feel that this comes naturally to me and that speaking on camera is something I enjoy and I love to teach and I love to learn and I love to share it, it is a form of competition with other YouTubers in a sense. Even though I might not like to think of it that way, I do have competitors out there. <laughs> Whether or not I'll let that dictate kind of the way that I approach things is a different matter, but I am in sort of a hustle and a grind period in my life and I've been sort of navigating how I can sort of honour and stay true to my own feminine core through that. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future, how to stay feminine on your hustle period, because I think the world that we live in now demands so much masculine energy for women. It's so, it's such a very small subsect that gets to truly live authentically in a way that is true to themselves, in a way that isn't necessarily true for more masculine cored men. I think someone with a masculine core, perhaps not very easily, but it's the world is very readily available for them to go out and to achieve and to work hard in things like business and whatever it is that their sort of mission or purpose layer is. Whereas for a feminine woman, in order to feel safe in your femininity, you have to have a provider because in this economy, there is no there are no freeloaders unless you wanna be homeless. The role of stay at home wife or mother is no longer an option for most people because I think we don't have that same counterpart of masculine men that are ready to provide in that sense. And I'm not saying at all that, you know, all women should go and become stay at home mothers. I think a lot of women would be happier if they did that. But I realize that you can still have your own ambitions and desires and goals. It's just if you have a more feminine core, then then it will feel like you can't achieve that until your love relationships are solved or until you feel fulfilled and content in your feminine energy, if that makes sense. But yeah, I think the kind of current society that we live in isn't really conducive to femininity and to communities that embody and encourage a more natural expression of love. And I think that's a shame because... I mean, it always breaks my heart when I think of the fact that now, in order for the average household to survive, you have to have two working parents. And that means that there is no one in the home anymore to create love, to channel love, to pour their love into their family, into the people around them. And most people nowadays don't even get to experience coming home to a well-cooked meal that is made with love and to have someone that can look after you spiritually and to have someone that is so receptive spiritually and so open to the idea of 
receiving rather than constantly trying to achieve but i don't know it's a difficult thing and i guess this is why it's taken so long for this kind of message to come out about feminine energy because in order for women to feel safe in their feminine they need to be able to have that masculine counterpart so now after you know the rise of Andrew Tate and Hamza, and I'm not saying that these are necessarily amazing role models, but they have certainly marked a shift in the male consciousness and I think and a drive towards more masculinity. I think we're now going to see that kind of equal opposite counterpart for women. Women are going to feel more safe in their femininity when they realize that they can rely on men who want to provide, if that makes sense. But yeah, I think that's all I really have to say for today. God bless and goodbye.